Hi, it's Ren. Welcome to a Ren's Tale. Today I'm bringing you the Visconti di Madroni Tarot. This is one of four historical decks I received on my birthday and I can't wait to show you. I have not seen these cards yet. All I did was take off the plastic wrap on the box and the cards themselves and separate them because they are very heavily foiled, but I haven't had a chance to look at them, so I can't wait. So let's dive in. The Visconti di Madroni Tarot is a museum quality historical deck by Lo Scarabeo. The time period for this deck is around 1442 to 1447 Milan, and it is the tarot deck of the Renaissance courts. This is the exterior of the box. It is slightly textured where the design is here, but everything else here is flat. It is a heavy box. This is a this is a brick of a tarot deck. This is the side of the box. And oh, it's heavy. <laughs> I'll flip over to the back and I'll read you. Let's see, get that centered for you. Okay, Visconti di Madroni Tarot. The 89 triumphs of the ancient Visconti di Madroni Tarot have been digitally restored with the original gold and silver engravings. The Visconti di Madroni Tarot deck, also called the Visconti in Cariel, is one of three surviving hand-painted tarots with Visconti heraldic features. Only 11 triumphs, 17 court cards, and 39 numeral cards survive from the ancient deck and are currently held in the collection of the Yale University Library. The digital restoration completes the deck to 89 cards, keeping the original size of 189 millimeters by 90 millimeters. In inches, that is 7.44 inches by 3.54 inches. This is a unique masterpiece fated to withstand the ravages of time. And I don't know if the light is picking up. There is gold and silver foiling on the back of the box. And oh, flip this over. As I say, this is a very heavy, heavy deck. And because this is such a large deck, I did have to use the wide angle on my camera. So I apologize if there is some side warping over here. It's just the nature of the beast because this deck is so large. Let's flip open the box. It does open from the bottom. And before we get into the book and the cards, I want to show you the interior flap. And we do have a ribbon here to remove the book. The book is in English and Italian. Here's the cover. The back just has Los Garabeo's logo. We have the title. Oops. So from page five to 86 is English and 87 on is Italian. And we'll look more at, um, you know what? Actually, let me read to you the opening paragraphs. So we have a little bit more of an idea about this deck. Um, while I do speak Italian, my pronunciation is not always correct. So please pardon any, any words that are not pronounced correctly in Italian and English for that matter. Visconti di Madroni Tarot. The Visconti di Madroni Tarot deck, also called the Visconti in Cariel, is one of three surviving hand-painted tarots with the Visconti heraldic features. Together with the Brera Brombia and the Colioni Baglioni, also called the Visconti Sforza and Pierpont Morgan Bergamo. The Visconti di Madroni family sold these cards to Melbert B. Carey Jr., whose widow, Mary Flegger Carey, subsequently offered them as bequest, along with the rest of his collection, to the Yale University Library, where they remain today. 
the cards measuring 189 millimeters by 90 millimeters are slightly larger than those of the other two decks and are made from overlapping sheets of cardstock probably pressed into a mold with a background decorated using a planchion with diamond shaped motifs bearing the radiant sun emblem of the Visconti family. And let me show you the backs of these cards, if I can get a card up, so you can see those emblems. I have fuzz from my sweatshirt on here. So those are the backs of the cards. The suit cards are characterized by a silver background with floral motifs and the deck is incomplete in the number of triumphs, meaning the trumps or the major arcana. While unlike other decks, there are six court cards. The two additional cards represent the female counterparts to the male page and male knight, thus supporting the neo-feudal taste of the 15th century courts. And it goes a lot more into the deck and um, the history, which we'll go more into this after I show you the cards. But I just want to just briefly look, I guess I haven't looked at this yet. So um, we do have more, a pretty detailed history, it looks like. Um, the numeral and the court cards. Okay, then we go into, okay, so for the Major Arcana, we have some information on each card. Looks like we have multiple pages on some cards, but like um, the Popus or the High Priestess, we only have two paragraphs. Um, let's see. Do we have anything for the minors? We do have extra cards where we have hope after the world. We have the hope card, faith and charity. And then we have notes about the Major Arcana. Okay, we have more history. Okay, a surprising thing about the Madroni is that the Bineki Libraries Visconti Tarot web page also assigns suits to groups of triumphs, each followed by its suit cards. So the swords are Empress, Emperor in Love, Staves or Fortitude, Faith and Hope, Cups or Charity, Chariot and Death, and Coins, no titles, but the cards are World and Judgment, respectively. Okay. Um, let's see, more, more history, lots of history, lots of reading with this. Um... Then we go into interpretations for the Mis Visconti di Madroni, uh, the triumphs. The theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. The court of staves. So we do have card meanings for the, for the minors. We have the King of Staves, the Queen, the Knight, the Equestrine, um, the Knave, the Lady of Staves. Okay, so it's just for the court cards, not for the full Minor Arcana, which, um, and then, okay, we do have a separate section for the numerals. So you Ace, two, three. Oh, that's great. Okay, this is a lot more than a lot more than I had expected. So you do have full full meanings for all the cards. And then we go into the Italian version of the book. 
Let's go through the cards. These are very heavy, very large cards. Oof. <laughs> Here's the side of the deck. Very large. Let me put this box aside. Now, as I said before, I unwrapped, these were wrapped in plastic and I did separate them because as you will see, they are very heavily foiled. Because they're heavily foiled, they all stuck together. So to unstick them, my advice is number one, do it very carefully and very slowly. I took like a group of cards, like maybe four or five. Um, they seem to have been kind of grouped to like plumped together in groups. And I got them on their side and I just slightly bent them and that seemed to release the foil and I was able to separate them without any damage. But just definitely, if you do pick up this deck, do it very carefully. So let's go through the cards. I'm hoping that lighting this was very difficult today because of the foiling. So I'm hoping the camera can pick up the foiling. I'll try to move the cards around so you can see what's foiled and what's not. Pretty much anything gold and silver is foiled. Um, the borders here, there is a little silver flower. The edges of the petals, let me see if you can pick that up. The edges of the petals are foiled. The rest of the border is not. And this one would be the full and the entire background is foiled and it is textured. That foiling has a definite texture to it. These are beautiful cards. So the background is textured, but the foil himself is not. Here's our magician. And again, the background is foiled. And the cups, it looks like we're doing, um, playing that game of hide the ball under the cups, whatever that game is called. We have some coins over here. Here is our high priestess. And I think I saw when I was just flipping through the book that they also called her the Popus. Her staff here is in gold. I'm hoping I'm doing the artwork justice here. Here is our Empress. Even her gown is in gold foil. And the flowers over here on this gown are in silver foil. Here's our Emperor in silver and gold. It's so shiny, you can see, <laughs> you can see my camera. Oh, let's bring you up close to the details. And this is the Hierophant. This card is almost all gold. Here 
Here we have our lovers. We have silver and gold foiling here. Their cherub. Our chariot. The artwork is exquisite. The foiling equally as exquisite. And if you hear snoring in the backgrounds, that's my faithful sidekick right beside me. <laughs> So this is our justice card in the eighth place. Her scales are silver. Here's our hermit. And it actually, our lantern is an hourglass. Very interesting. Here is our Wheel of Fortune. I'm hoping the light is picking up the textures in these cards as well as the art. Here is strength in the 11th position. Her dress is completely silver foiled with the gold background. Get some of that reflection. The hanged man with silver and gold coins coming out of his pocket. Let's see if the light can catch those coins. There we go. I'm working with two soft boxes and a window to try to get you the best lighting possible today. Here's the death card. Here's Temperance. Heavily, heavily foiled in her gown. The Devil card.
the tower. The star. I'm actually almost speechless with these cards. They're stunning. They're absolutely stunning. This is definitely a deck you need to see in person to appreciate. Our moon card. See the light of the moon. The sun. So here we have the judgment card. The world. And then we have, I'm assuming the order is Faith, Hope, and Charity, but you know what? Let me double check. I would be incorrect. The first card is Hope. And then we have Faith and Charity. So this is Hope. She's standing on someone. I'll need to look that one up later. Here we have Faith. The light is picking up all that gorgeous foiling. And here is Charity. And then we go into our Minor Arcana. This is our Ace of Cups. Now these have a primarily silver foiling. These might be harder to see. The 
That's your Ace of Cups. Your Two of Cups will go through these a little bit faster since it is a pip deck. Your Three of Cups. Four. Five of Cups. Six. Whoops. Seven of Cups. Your eight. Nine of Cups. And ten. And you can see what I mean about very heavily foiled. This is why the cards were sticking. Okay, so let's refer back to the book because we do have the additional court cards. So we have Okay. So we have the Lady of Cups. And then we have the Knave of Cups. We have the Equest, I'll do this in Italian, Equestrani of Cups. Our Knight of Cups. Our queen. And our king. And then we go into our suit of coins. Oops. Two of coins. Let me see if I can show you some of the symbolism here. Here we have the three of coins. The four of coins. So we have an additional ancient coin added each with each card. Um, actually take that back. These two are the same. And on the five, it looks like we have three of this. Okay, and these two are the same. So I'm wrong. It's the same two. Okay. 
I said, I'm seeing this deck for the first time, just, just as you are. And I'm assuming the book explains what these coins are. The Eight of Coins. The Nine. And the Ten. And then we would have our Lady of Coins. Our knave our equestrani, our female knight. Our night. Our queen. and our king. And then here we have our, I'm assuming these are the staves or the wand, yes. These are the staves. The two of saves. The three. The four. The five. Six seven eight nine and ten. We have our Lady of Staves. Our Knave. You can really see the under coloring under the foil on this one. That royal blue really comes through. Our female knight. Our 
Power Knight. Our Queen. And our king. And then we have our suit of swords. This is our ace. The Two of Swords, Three of Swords, Four of Swords, Five. Six of Swords, Seven, Eight of Swords, Nine of Swords, Ten of Swords, Our Lady of Swords, Our Knave, Our Equestrani. I love the horse on this one. Our Knight. Our Queen, and our King. This is a very young King. Oh, what an exquisite deck. <laughs> These are amazingly beautiful cards. I wanted to look up some of the meanings of the card. You know, since we have the King of Swords sitting upright, because I'm not even going to attempt to shuffle these. Um, so for the King of Swords, let's see what it says about him. Okay, King of Swords, 
Now this is just a brief, very brief section about him. It says in a reading, this king can represent a demanding boss, an official in law enforcement or justice, a philosopher, a lecturer, a writer, a stern father. Qualities and personality, controlling, shrewd, sagacious, perceptive, commanding, stern, discerning, holds high standards and expects excellence. So that's what it tells us about the King of Swords. Um, let's look at one of the... Okay, just pull it random here. And we have Temperance. So let's read about Temperance. And this has lots of Latin words. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Temper. Oh, you know what? There were two sections. <laughs> there's a section explaining the card, and then there's a, a section um, giving the meaning of the card. And I will show you. This is describing the card and who's on the card. And then there is this section giving you the meaning of the card. So let's read the meaning of the card. A crowned maiden pours shimmering water from a dark vessel into a golden one. The impossible angle of the stream indicates this is not an earthly act of merely transferring liquid between two pitchers. This is a magical act, an alchemical mingling, a transformation. The water is refined and enhanced as it flows into ewer of gold. This is the embodiment of temperance, purifying the corruptible into the incorruptible. Meaning, the choices you make every day contribute to your soul's condition. Add more goodness, more harmony, more love to the alchemy that is your life. Find where you are out of balance, whether in body, mind, or spirit. Purify, purify, purify. There are things approaching that will require your best self. And then if we were going to actually look at the card itself, um, it talks about temperance is one of the four cardinal virtues. For Plato and the Republic, it controls the appetites for Aristotle. It essentially consists in the moderation of sensual pleasures in compliance with the requirements of the right reason. Um, and it just, it, it goes on. I mean, this is, we could be here, we could be here all day. Um, wow, this is, there's so much information you know, I have so many decks and I have a few historical decks and, um, you know, after doing tarot cards for over 25 years, I think we're on 28 years now. Um, I just want, I'm really looking towards the historical decks. Um, I mean, I know a lot of the history. I don't know all the history. Um, I know the history of the Rider Waite Smith deck, but as far as the European history, I'm really looking forward to learning more of that. Uh, like I said, there this is one of four historical decks that I received for my birthday. I have three more that I want to show you, and um, I hope you follow along and come along with me on this historical journey. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and subscribe. It helps my channel grow and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.